Right, so as you know, we've got this e-bike that we've been um, given to do some reviews and bits and pieces of. And we did an unboxing video. What we're going to do now is look at this thing, which is the control circuitry. And we're going to look at the basic codes. There's about 20 of them, incidentally. And for research and information purposes only, I'm going to show you how to uh, remove the speed block and adapt it so that the throttle control works as well as the pedal assistance, because this is purely pedal assist. But to bear in mind, it's for research and interest purposes only. By no way am I encouraging you to do this. I'm just going to show you how you could do it purely so that you know, not so that you do it. Anyway, let's get this down and have a look at those codes. So the whole thing is actually controlled by this little controller here. It's an SH66. Incidentally, that's a USB port. You can just charge your phone with that. As long as the key is in, that will actually charge your phone. It's kind of cool. But this is the controller. Now to power it on, you obviously press the power button, hold it for about three seconds and it will power on. If you hold the plus and the minus button down at the same time for a few seconds, there we go, we go into what's called the P settings, and this is P setting 1. P setting 1 actually just changes the brightness, and you go up and down the P settings using that. You have to scroll all the way through, so we've got 2, 3, 4, 5, and it goes up to 20. So those are the P settings, how you access them. Now the really interesting ones are in fact, uh, for us, P2, P8, and P9. So let's have a look at P2. So P2, all it does is change the display from miles to kilometres. So 1 is miles, 0 is kilometres. Just change that and you get the display to be relevant to your country, which is great if you happen to be in Britain or the USA. P8 is the speed limit. Now when you get that from the factory, it's 25 kilometres per hour. And you can see I've put that up at 100. This bike won't do 100 kilometers an hour. It's got a um, three volt back, uh, sorry, a 36 volt battery in it. It's got a uh, 350 watt motor. So with all the best will in the world, sails up, backing wind, going downhill, you're still not gonna do 100 kilometers an hour. You'll get about 35, maybe if you're really lucky and it's all very favorable, 40. So it will max out at that kind of level but the controller now has its speed limit removed and you do that really really easily Let's go back into it now we're at p8 just by pressing the plus and the minus key so we press that we can take that up to the the limit that we want and as i say it comes with 25 and you can change that speed limit really easily and the next one is p9 p9 is what's called the non-zero start this is like a sensitivity reading if you put this at zero, if you put this at zero, then you don't need to give it much in the way of a push at all in order to get it going. So it will go really beautifully, really easily, just by gently pushing, and it will go up to that speed limit. So those are the settings that you need to change to remove the speed limit, and it's the first step, actually, of um, getting throttle control. So until a couple of months ago, adjusting P8 and P9 was all you had to do in order to get it into throttle mode. They've done an update on this 866 controller, so now what you need to do is a little hack to do that. To get into throttle mode, you need to be sure that it's in pedal assist mode. So the first thing you do is the pedal assist mode hack. For that, pull on both brakes, turn on the controller, and you'll see there's a warning sign right there the brakes are on. You count to 20 slowly in your head, let go, turn it off, and now it's in pedal assist mode and you're certain it's in pedal assist mode. To get it into throttle mode, there's the throttle there, twist the throttle all the way around, pull on that brake, pull on that brake and turn it on. Count to 20 in your head, let go, turn it off, and when you turn it back on again, the throttle will work. The throttle will only work in level three. Do you see this level here? It's one, two, three. That's where the throttle will work. To get it back into pedal assist, both brakes on, count to 20 in your head, let go, turn it off. 
when you turn it back on again, it'll be in pedal assist. It'll only work on throttle in assist mode 3. So that, when it's in there, will now work on the throttle control. Let me show you that. Okay, twist that throttle. This sounds beautiful. Isn't it cool? Okay, so let's have a quick run through on the other P codes. Okay, so that's P1, and that's just screen brightness. P2, we actually covered, changing between miles and kilometers. P3 is the battery voltage. You can see it's 36 voltage, volts there. You set it to the voltage of your battery. P4 is the auto sleep timer. This is set for 10 minutes. You can set it up to 60 minutes. P5 is the uh, number of assists, and it can be 0, 1, or 2, and that sets the levels that you get assistance at, which you can use to set uh, markers for speed. P6 is the wheel diameter, it's machine specific. P7 is the number of magnets in the sensor, again it's speed um, specific. P8 as we know is the speed cap and we change that to 100. P9 is the non-zero start and we've put that down to 1, so that should be 0, so we'll have to change that again. If you change it and you do that, then you have to wait for it to close itself out, turn it off, turn it on. So it's closed out. Turn it off, turn it on, and then that should have stayed at zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're still at zero. P10 is what's called the drive mode. Zero is no assist, one is electric only, and two is both. So I've got it on two so it can be pedal bike only or electric bike. This, oh. P10 in P11, this is the assist delay. It's the time it takes for you to do a bit of pedaling when the motor will actually kick in. And at 1, it's the lowest. At 24, it's the highest, and it takes a little bit of uh, oomph, a little bit of pedaling to get the power assist with you. P12 is the acceleration strength. I've set this to the highest acceleration strength. 0 is the lowest, 5 is the highest. P13 is the sensor type. P14 is the control amp limit. P15 is the battery discharge voltage. It cuts out when it gets to 29 volts. P16 is reset the speedometer or the odometer. P17 is cruise control. It's actually turned on as you actually got cruise control, which is weird. 18 is the display adjustment. 19 is the zero gear, so you can either enable or disable it, in which case it's either pedal powered or no pedal power and only electric, and P20 is to communicate with the controller. So very quickly, those are the codes, what they do, and how to go about removing that cap and getting it to work on the throttle only. So that controller really is easy to use, hey? And to my mind, it's a bit of a benefit that it's so easy to mod. I mean, a couple of little swaps around, a couple of little hacks, and you can basically make that into whatever you want it to be. And for me, that's actually one of the cool things about that bike. I really liked it when I found out how easy it was to change everything around. Them to do things like remove the um, speed lock on it and to change it from pedal assist to throttle control. Obviously, educational purposes only. And this has been put back into uh, pedal assist because that's the legal requirement here in the UK. So we've got this back into pedal assist now. And now we've had a look at how the controller works and how to make those adaptations. The next thing we're going to do is take this up to London. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Ah, one thing before I sign off. And this actually is, is uh, based on experience. Uh, if you're going to make changes like this, your best bet is to write down what the factory settings were. Because it's almost impossible, in fact it is impossible, to find those factory settings. So go through the P numbers, write down what the settings were, so that if you do make a mistake, you can put it back to the factory settings. And I tell you it's experience because it took me about four hours to put it back. Because I changed the setting uh, accidentally, which is uh, easier to do than you think. And the thing just wouldn't work. And me and Luke were in the car park for a couple of hours trying to get it to work. Uh, he finally gave up because he's young and has no staying power. And I managed to actually get that thing changed back. And it was one single setting moved by one number. 
was all it actually was. So write down those settings before you actually begin playing around with it, so that if you do make a mistake, you can go back to ground zero without spending four hours of utter frustration. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.